In this video, we will be discussing grip editing solid models. If you'd like to follow with this video, please open the file 0802 grip editing solid models .dwg, located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. The grips that display on selected solid models and the types of edits you can make depend upon the solid model you select and how you select it. Let's go ahead and learn about the grips that are available for various solid model types and how to access those grips. Using grips, you can quickly modify solid models in very diverse ways. So how do you edit with grips? Well, each type of model that you create has different grips that you can select and use when editing the model. If we look at solid primitives, when you select a solid primitive, the grips that display are triangles for quicker identification, because depending on the solid primitive, you can click on either the triangle grips or sometimes a square grip to actually resize and reposition the primitive in multiple directions. So for instance, if I wanted to change the height here, I could simply change the height of this cone solid primitive. If I wanted to change the top radius, I would select this triangular grip and notice how it would let me change that as well. If I select this box and select this triangle, this will allow me to change the height. As well as if I select the square grip, I can change the position and location of it as well. Don't forget about your grip editing options by simply right clicking. You can also access the move, stretch, rotate, scale, mirror, and redefine base point as you can do with standard AutoCAD objects. You also have the option to select any of the primitives, and typically in the properties palette, you will be able to change pretty much any of the different settings that you would expect to be able to change, such as the width right here, or the height, and so on. The same thing applies to other more complex solid primitives, such as this cone here, because AutoCAD knows how it was drawn and what type of object it is, I can change the base radius by simply typing in three, and the top radius by typing in one, and the height of, let's say, three there. Solid models created from 2D profiles display their grips for the defining shapes. Using grips, you can change the size and shape of the solid model, and so on. If I go ahead and select this solid model right here, notice how it only selects the entire model. So to select any of the specific 2D profiles or sides of the solid model, and this also works with primitives too, let me press escape, you hold down the control key on the keyboard and you will now notice how it actually knows which solids, as I hover over them, were used to create the composite model. So if I wanted to change, let's say, the 2D profile of this part of the composite, I would simply select it first, and then select it again, and notice how I'm getting the grips from the 2D profile, as this was the 2D profile used to create that shape, and this is the 2D profile used to create this shape here. If I select any of those square blue grips, I now can change any part of that square blue grip. Also note, if you press spacebar, it will cycle between different options for editing, such as moving it, rotating it, and scaling it. Don't forget, you can select part of the composite model that may not be exactly in the location as you can see here. If I hold the control key down and pick here, you'll notice that I actually have the ability to select that sub object from this composite model, even though this part of the cylinder that was used to create that solid model is no longer there as it was a hole. In this model, if I hold the control key down and click on this part of the solid model, you'll notice that I now have access very similar to the primitive solid grips. If I hover into the properties palette, you'll also notice it does recognize that it was a cylinder used to create that object, and I can change the different properties that I would expect to be able to change for this specific solid model. So that was selecting solid faces. Well, guess what? Not only can you select solid faces, but you can select the vertex of a solid model, or you can select the edge of a solid model. So again, hold the control key down. Let's say I want to actually create a taper for this edge here. I'll simply press the control key down, and as I hover my mouse, you'll notice that each of the individual parts of the composite solid will highlight. I can now pick, and now I'm actually selecting the actual edge there. Now I can use dynamic input to simply type a distance in of let's say one, enter, and there's my taper. Let's go ahead and do that to the other side. I'll press escape, control key down on the keyboard, and then click, and notice how it grabs the edge, pick that blue grip, lock polar tracking, using dynamic input, I'll type one, and then enter. Let's say I wanted to move this cylinder over to the left by a certain distance. I'll hold the control key down, select the cylinder. Notice how it selects just the cylinder part with that little circular grip. I can now pick that circular red grip, and now using dynamic input, I can lock in and polar tracking, and then type a distance in of 0.1. Enter, and now it's moved over by 0.1.
As I mentioned before, you can also select the actual vertex. So if I want to change this vertex here, I will simply hover really close here and then click. Notice how you get a circular grip. And if I go ahead and hover for a second, as with the other solid grip editing methods, you can actually hover a second and you get multifunctional grips like move vertex or allow triangulation. If I click now, notice how it just grabs just that vertex. And now I'm editing that vertex again using dynamic input. I can type one and taper it in that way. Press escape. Let's select that edge again and hover over the red grip and notice how we get some additional multifunctional grip menus like extend adjacent faces or move the edge, etc. So I can click that one and notice how it actually will extend that by a certain distance if I choose to do so. If let's say you have a solid model that history was not recorded. So for instance, this one here, if I select it and I'll go to the properties palette, notice how history is set to none and there's no history for this object. To make edits, it would be very difficult without the ability to use the grips. If I hold the control key down on the keyboard and I hover over the different parts, you'll notice that I can actually change the different subcomponents. You'll see here is the grip and then I can actually go in here and then move it around if I need to and so on and notice how it readjusts everything automatically. If I wanted to change fillets or chamfers, I could do so by holding the control key down and hovering over the actual fillet. This one here will allow you to change the chamfer. If I go to the properties palette, you'll notice the radius is right there and I can change this to whatever radius I want to. You will also notice this little drop down here that you can select and then pick and then notice how it also allows you to dynamically change that fillet as you want to. You can just type in a distance and there's your new fillet. Grip editing allows you to edit your solid models in very diverse ways, making it much easier to make manipulations after you create your models. This concludes this video discussing grip editing solid models.